Hey guys, Plastic on here. How you guys been doing? I got a uh, some pretty interesting um, stuff here to kind of talk about. I've got um, a little bit of information to kind of spread around for you guys that are probably not really familiar with this. But um, let's talk about the uh, G2 mini bots. Um, let's get the notorious one out of the way first. But um, Got good old um, Bumblebee. Yes, I know he's got a G2 emblem there on his chest, which I put on there because you know rapper labels are nice, and I actually like having emblems on my characters. So. But these little guys, um, I think they should have gotten more love during the G2 era. I really don't think these guys got enough love during that time. Personally, I think they probably could have released all the mini bots. But I think, you know, because they're just kind of dipping their toes in the water again, just try to bring the G1 molds back into G2, and this is a really easy way of doing it, was by using these. Now, if you guys notice, he does have the, um, the old G1 faceplate Bumblebee face, and I've always liked that. Everybody kind of looks at him as maybe like a gold bug, you know, because, you know, gold bug back in G1 was, you know, that's when Bumblebee was reformatted into a stronger version of him. And honestly, it's kind of fits considering he's very gold. And that's one thing I do like about him. I've always liked the fact that he had a uh, bit of a gold appearance to him and, you know, very, very nice, solid little piece. Um, these guys are kind of like a little heartwarming thing. They've always have been when it comes to collecting Transformers. Let's talk about another one here. <clears throat> Good old. Yes, he's very, 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 very screaming. I love this color. But Beachcomber. Beachcomber, honestly, he literally is one of the coolest, I think, of the group did add a uh, nice little Autobot emblem right there on his leg. So that way, you know, when you put him in robot mode or put him in a vehicle mode, you can still see it. And I don't have to worry about trying to stick one here on the chest and then trying to find one on the bot itself. I always thought it was interesting that they're actually tattooed Autobot as well. And you can see it right there. Oh, I don't know his arm. Kind of hard to see, but he is there. But, yeah, these guys are really, really neat. I do like these. They've always had a really cool little transformation. And to me, this was the beginning of Hasbro trying to do that metal chrome. And I think they did a very good job because a lot of these don't tend to flake. A lot like um, some of your trans metal um, Beast Wars figures did. I'm not knocking on Beast Wars. I love Beast Wars, by the way. I'm just not a Beast War toy collector. Yes, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that question, for that uh, comment, but I'm sorry, guys. I just don't. I love the cartoon, and I like the concept behind them. But you know, G2 is where you know things work for me because I like these things. I just I, I do. And it's the colors. It's the whole aesthetic, it's the whole extreme thing, I'm a big fan of them. And you know, I think, I think Minibots are kind of really underrated, I really do. Now let's move on to another one that's kind of an oddity, because it's kind of strange how this happened to this one, but I'm talking about G2C Spray, which you know, he's obviously got that nice blue going on. And when I'm talking about oddity, I'm talking about a color hue. If you guys actually look on the aftermarket, sometimes you'll see a purplish one or one that's almost a lavender color. A lot of people are not really familiar with this, but this is whenever Hasbro actually got the um, the companies that were manufacturing these had gotten the color incorrect. And whenever they were doing the batch, instead of saying, oh, well, we need to throw those out because those aren't the color you're supposed to be, 
they still package them and send them out to the masses and that's why you see sometimes a purple or a lavender colored version of him. It was just basically a factory mistake and I always, always thought that was kind of cool and it's really neat seeing that a Transformer gets kind of a weird one-off thing. I mean it's not one of those things that a lot of people tend to like chase after you know because you know they want that one really really weird figure but some people do and when you do find them out there they are very pricey because there's not many of them out there because it was primarily when they were first trying to get the batch going and then they were like you know what we're not going to pitch them out we're just going to turn around and we're going to take them and we're going to sell them because you know what they're going to get bought anyway because there's nothing wrong with them except for the paint job and you know what at the time those kids didn't care they liked our extreme crazy colors so it's one of those uh, really, really weird ones. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. Most people are like, what in the heck is this? And why was this particular one here? Got a little bit of dust on him. Knock it off there. Do, 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 do. Yes, I do dust my toys every now and then. Sometimes they get a little dusty because, guys, I just moved. So some things kind of got moved around a lot. Anyway, um, the elephant in the room. And a lot of people are very confused about this one, and it's a very, very confusing thing. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about Hubcap. Hubcap, obviously, very, very cool color, by the way. And everybody's like, why is he red instead of yellow? Because his original color was yellow. And why Hubcap instead of Cliff Jumper? Well, it turns out, the story goes, that when Hasbro decided to start doing the mini bots, he was mislabeled. The molds were mislabeled. And good old Hubcap here got pulled out, and before they could stop and notice that the production was incorrect whenever they actually started sending the tool molds to the manufacturer to have them do their thing, it was too late um, and that's where they were like well we got to change the box art we got to change the name because originally it's supposed to have been cliff jumper that's why he's red and a lot of people were like well that's kind of strange why would they uh, just why wouldn't they just try to reshoot cliff jumper instead of continuing on with this well manufacturing costs are expensive and during the time when um, Transformers was trying to be competitive with what's going on at the time because, no offense, but Ninja Turtles was out, kind of taking everything by storm toward about the mid 80s going into the 90s and then all of a sudden Power Rangers pops up out of nowhere and no one's looking at Transformers anymore. So they were like, you know, we have to create something to put it on the market and you know what, this chrome is very shiny so it kind of you know, it's eye appealing to kids and adults as alike. And the thing is, is they were like, well, I guess we just need to put these kind of um, toys out there and just let them have them. And the thing is, instead of going through the big hassle of redoing all these hubcaps, they just created the box art, stuck them in the package, sent them on their way. Um, and it was a really, really strange thing for them to do because it wasn't never intended to be like that. And that's one of those kind of weird ones when it comes to the mini bots. I personally love the mini bots. I'm a big fan of them. That's why I've done a few customs of them. You guys have probably seen my reviews. <clears throat> this is my custom tailgate, by the way. Very shiny. Um, I tried when I did my customs to try to kind of make them fit the G2 aesthetic because I'm always kind of people that I kind of like to flesh my Transformers line out a little bit more. I know some people are like, well, that's not true G2 and this, that, and the other. I'm like, yes, I know that. I've got several on the shelf that are true G2, but I also have several that are true G2. 
And the thing is, when it comes to this toy line, there's a lot of things that kind of got a little messed up at the time because they were trying to kind of rush to go against everything else that was going out at the time. And most people were like, oh, well, why didn't they take more time into this? Well, that's for a different discussion because I'm going to get into that one after a while. But anyhow, this has been Plastic On. This is yet a little fill in on some of the misconceptions of Generation 2 and why things are kind of odd. And you know what? A little bit of love to the mini bots. That's it for now. Bye!